Hello and welcome to my tech fan. In this video I'll try to do re the review of the PC ABS filament by the Polymaker. I will try to because uh, it is really hard for printing. According to specifications uh, it requires the heated chamber up to 80 degrees Celsius or even higher. So at this moment I'm not even sure if I can print it. But if you're watching this video maybe I was even successful then. Uh, because finally I have this uh, printer. This is a Kiddy X Max 3. And it is able to heat up, actively heat up the chamber inside up to 65 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure at this moment if it will be enough, but so far I could successfully print with ABS and, and polycarbonate, so why not combination of these two? Well, we will see. Now, according to specifications, the print temperature is between 250 and 270 degrees Celsius, nothing special about it. And the print speed, well, up to 50 millimeters per second, so I'm not sure that uh, this is very fast printer. If I have to slow down so much, well, I will try to do the basic settings that for the ABS and I will slow it down maybe to 50%, but that's also very fast too. I think it's time to unbox it. Great vacuum packaging and this material is better than regular foil because it prevents better the filament from the moisture. And this bag is resealable, so cut it above this ceiling line. A lot of useful information on the spool, which includes the scale, different temperatures, weight of the empty spool. <laughs> Maybe one thing is not mentioned here, and that it requires a heated chamber. The filament is changed from this orange PC blend to this new black color. On the bed surface I'm using the glue stick, which was included in the kit. This is a temperature tower and I already entered the codes for the temperature change. And here you can see my temperature and for chamber I set 65 degrees Celsius. And also the maximum particling from default I reduced to 40% maximum. The speed I will set to 50%. One of the disadvantages of this printer is that it is very hard to see that first layer. But it looks okay so far. Heating of the chamber started after the first layer. And I think it will be heated up in 5 minutes or something like that. Well, even this 50% speed looks very fast. I hope it's not too fast for this material. It is so hard to get a good view angle for the camera because this door on the top is curved and it deforms the light. And this is the moment I was waiting for, the bridging moment. And it slows down here, but it looks perfect. Printing is finished few seconds ago, and when the bed stops, I will check the bed adhesion. Hmm, I can feel a little bit that smell from the ABS. Okay, this bed adhesion is great, probably because of the glue stick. I will wait until the bed cools down, but I will close the door. The bed is still 49 degrees Celsius, but I think it should be removable now. Oh, perfect. Wow, and look at this quality. Perfect overhang and bridging, even on the highest temperature element. Don't be confused, this is 270 degrees Celsius, only I don't have the element with that number. I decided to give it a try, so I will print all test objects at once. Only I have to add some little bit more glue to the surface. These are my regular test objects and I'm using maximum number of the perimeters, as always. And the printing time will be approximately one hour. It's a little bit hard to see because of the black color, but the first layer is perfectly down. And I slowed down the printing only to 60% from the default printing speed for the ABS. But this is quite fast too. The printing is at 50% and with this printer it looks so easy. Last two objects for the layer adhesion test and all test specimens will be printed in approximately one hour, which is new record actually. Printing is finished few seconds ago, just quick bed adhesion which is great until it's hot and I have to ventilate this room because this smell of ABS is definitely noticeable. Ready for testing. And before mechanical testing I wanted to show you that uh, these objects are perfectly striped, absolutely no warping. I'm starting with tensile or pulling test. This test object is printed in horizontal position. 
similar brake loads in both cases, but I will compare them uh, later in the results part with some average ABS. Another layer adhesion test with the vertically printed test objects. I find this layer adhesion a little bit weak, so I check my settings and I have to admit that I did a very stupid mistake. When I prepare the temperature tower, there we have those codes for the temperature changes on certain layer. And when I prepared the test objects, I just deleted the temperature tower, inserted new test files and I sliced that object. And I forgot to remove those codes for the temperature change. Most of the test specimens are not affected by this, except uh, for the layer adhesion, because actually the top of that uh, test objects was printed on 250 degrees Celsius, so 20 degrees Celsius uh, lower than the base. And I noticed that they broke exactly there where the temperature was 250 degrees Celsius. So I have to reprint these two test objects. And this time the brake was on a higher load and they brake correctly on the smallest cross-section area. Two sided shear stress, the diameter of this test object is uh, 5 mm. And a little bit stronger than average ABS. They are shared correctly, but I couldn't find all three pieces. Now three point bending test. Here you can see a moment where I have all load placed. And I will measure the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds under the given load. This part is speeded up 25 times. And after the test I can see very minimal permanent deformation on these test objects. Now the torque or twist test, the diameter of these test objects is 6 mm and I'm measuring the load at 90 degree angle and the maximum load. Here you can see it after this test. And now the ISOT impact test with these notch test objects and half kilogram hammer. And according to specs it should perform very good in this test. This ABS. Opa. Okay, so this was very impressive, I cannot see this too often. And let's see it one more time in slow motion. No break under the half kilogram hammer. And this is how it looks like, so almost uh, no deformation. I just couldn't stop here because uh, I want to know approximately at least what is the maximum break load for this uh, material because it was not even close to be broken with this half kilogram hammer. The correct method would be actually to replace the hammer with this uh, one kilogram version but I don't want to change my test equipment because it works great with most of the materials. Uh, instead, I'm using a different approach. So I reprinted uh, these test objects and I reduced the dimension to 80% in two dimensions. So this means I reduced the cross-section area to 64% and I hope this will be enough to break it with this half kilogram hammer. Not 100% correct method, in theory it works, yes, uh, but just to satisfy my curiosity, this will be fine for me. This ABS with reduced size. Interesting, not completely broken, but it deformed enough so the hammer goes through it and I have some measured data. Here you can see it again in slow motion. And here the hammer stopped and uh, this is the zero position. And if I measure difference in height, I can calculate the potential and energy, which is actually the energy used for breaking this test object. Just for fun, this is basic PLA by Bamboo Lab and it was broken very easily. And here you can see the difference in size too. The temperature test in oven, this one is the PC ABS and I have some TPU filaments testing in the progress too. And uh, I will start here the time lapse inside the oven. And basically, I try to analyze here only the PC ABS. And the first deformation I noticed at approximately 145 degrees Celsius. This is definitely much higher compared to the ordinary regular ABS. I stopped the experiment on 180 degrees Celsius and of course it was deformed quite a lot but very impressive so much better than the regular ABS. And also I measured the hardness I'm not sure why maybe it is related to wear resistance C and the average hardness was 72.5 which is quite hard material. And now a regular creep test uh, the load is 1.25 kilograms and I'm locking the position for more accurate measuring where I will measure the distance between two reference surfaces. And this is the first day. And I'm repeating this uh, every day. 
and this is the fifth day 18.14 and now I'm removing the load and almost no deformation on it. It's time to analyze the data in this uh, Excel table which you can download from mytechfund.com website and the summary will be added to the Patreon's uh, summary table. Let's start with the creep test. So these are the directly measured values, the distance between two reference surfaces and uh, what we need is the difference between two days. This is what you can see on this second table or on this graph and we can see that basically on second or third day it completely stopped with the creeping so it acts very similar like a regular ABS. The tensile or uh, pulling test, the brake load, and it was uh, very similar like uh, with the average ABS. Now the layer adhesion test, and uh, here actually it was weaker following those instructions according uh, to manufacturer, except don't forget the chamber temperature was 65 because this was my maximum. They recommend uh, 90 degrees Celsius, I think. Just a quick note, for my curiosity I reprinted these test objects for the layer attention test on 290 degrees Celsius because with this printer I have a lot of space, I can go up to 350 if I want to and with this the layer attention was improved even more. But of course in this table I will include only those data which was uh, measured on objects printed inside the recommended temperature range because this is what the most of the users will do, follow the instructions given by the manufacturer. Don't forget I use here 40% part cooling and I also try to completely disable the part cooling but if I print only these two objects that small area don't have time to cool down. If I added some bigger object next to it, D6 dice in this case, uh, then it was printed correctly even with zero part cooling. With this the layer adhesion was improved, the brake load above 30 kg, but I don't want to include that data here because I don't want to motivate anybody to completely disable the part cooling because it may be risky if you print some smaller objects. The shear stress, um, no significant difference compared to the average ABS. And now 3 point bending test and here you can see the deformations under given load after 30 seconds but maybe this is more important and interesting uh, information. Uh, now important to mention that I don't have uh, ABS uh, with measured with this uh, new bending uh, test so only I have this easy ABS which acts more like PTG uh, but uh, well this is what I can compare. So these are the deformations uh, under these loads after 130 and 60 seconds and what we can see when it is almost horizontal that it doesn't deform under this load. And when we have uh, on some small angle, this means it creeps, it continuously deforms under this load. And we can see for this uh, PCABS it is somewhere between 5 and 10 kilograms where it doesn't creep under that load. The torque or twist test and I think the load at 90 degree angle is more important and uh, here it was a little bit weaker than average ABS but it is quite acceptable. This means it is more elastic and actually it was I think very important in next test which is the ISOD impact test and you saw the regular size object didn't even broke so I have to reduce the size to get some measured data and uh, here you can see that it is almost two times better compared to the average ABS. The temperature test, another uh, specification where it performs much better than the average ABS. So in my testing it started with deformation 145 degrees Celsius. Of course this is only 15 minute test so I don't recommend to using it on this temperature but uh, you can approximately imagine that it has much better temperature resistance compared to the average ABS. And at the end the hardness I'm always measuring it and uh, I think it is related to the wear resistance and actually I'm preparing some tests where I want to measure this and finally I can answer my questions but we will see that in the future. Quick conclusions for the end and I will add this uh, line to the summary table for my Patreon supporters. Don't forget every data is available for everybody but you have to collect it yourself. I'm just preparing, this is my only gift to my Patreon supporters so they can have this comparison very quickly on one place. According to specifications, uh, this PCABS is not easy for printing, but this is what I already mentioned in the review of this printer that I was really excited about it because I will get the new possibilities, actively heated chamber, 350 on the nozzle and similar. And actually it makes printing of this filament very easy. I mean it's... Uh, 
it has some weak elements. For example, this plastic, if I press it, it, it cracks, especially during the heated chamber. Uh, and uh, I was working here and I heard some cracks and I had to jump to see is there any problem with the printing or it just uh, cracks from that heat deflection. This screen is not responsive. You and I have to press it a little bit. It's not just a touch screen. It used the BL touch for the leveling but instead of some uh, inductive probe or maybe the load cell method with touching of the nozzle, but actually it prints great, especially this kind of filaments. Now about this PC ABS. Uh, the biggest weakness is the layer adhesion. But you saw uh, uh, there are some methods where we can improve this, but uh, you have to go outside of that recommended printing temperature range. For example, to increase the printing temperature, reduce the part cooling and similar. Two biggest advantages I want to mention. One is the impact resistance and the second is the much higher temperature resistance compared to the regular ABS. Now one thing you have to take care about and that's uh, the smell and those fumes. It smells like any other older regular ABS. Actually Polymaker's ABS doesn't smell. They could use that technology with this filament too, it would be better. I still didn't connect my printer to the ventilation hole on this wall because I'm working on some kind of splitter because I want to connect uh, two printers to that. But definitely you should take care about those uh, fumes uh, if you want to use this filament. Now if you have some other experience with these filaments or maybe you have the successful prints on some different printers, then please write me down in the comment section a few lines. Thank you for watching and happy printing!